Welcome back to the Mech Tech Tech. Today we have another custom build for you featuring Marvin Murderous Mimic. Marvin is a 2-2 two, two for 2 that has all of the activated abilities of all creatures you control. So Marvin is effectively a mirror maze of abilities based on the other abilities you have in play for your creatures. So what are we doing for Marvin? Well, we're doing exactly what you would think, right? We're playing a lot of creatures that have activated abilities, ideally finding ways of generating infinite mana to pay for those abilities, uh, just because some of them do require mana to like do their thing. And uh, ultimately, hoping to win just through sheer value. So, what is our, what's our big game plan here? Well, we want to make Marvin huge. We want to make him evasive or just like deal damage despite the fact that he was blocked, possibly remove our opponent's boards. It'll be a good time. Let's start off by modulating our power. We're going to start off with Chronomaton. So Chronomaton is a 1-1 one, one for 1. You can pay 1 and tap them to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. Whenever a card refers to its own self by name, it really just means this card, right? So whenever Marvin copies the ability, we're actually going to be pumping up Marvin with these plus 1 plus 1 counters for 1 mana and tapping them down. Cryptic Trilobite. So XX for a 0-0, but they're going to enter with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on them. We can remove plus one plus one counters from them to add two coverless mana. Much like our Chronomaton, we could pay one and tap them down to add a plus one plus one counter to them. Crystalline Crawler. A one one for four, but they will enter with an extra plus one plus one counter for each color of mana spent to cast them. Uh, we do have a couple filter things in the deck, so we could generate colored mana. Though generally speaking, right, we're only using colorless in this deck. Uh, but... We could remove a plus one plus one counter from them to generate ourselves a colored mana, and we could tap them down, no extra cost, to put a plus one plus one counter onto them. Drill Works Mole. So a one one for one, two mana, tap them down. Drill Works Mole gets a little bigger. Target Commander gets a little bigger. So if we're doing it with Marvin, right, pay two, tap down, two plus one plus one counters for Marvin. Farmsteed Gleaner. So Farmsteed Gleaner is a three cost two two, which won't untap during your untap step. But we're really here for this ability, which is to pay two and untap them to put a plus one plus one counter onto the creature. Uh, so really primarily here for the fact that they are an untapper, like I said, but the, the plus one plus one counter still falls into the power modulation that we're looking for. Giggling Skitter Spike. A four cost one one with indestructible. Whenever it attacks or blocks or becomes the target of a spell. We're going to deal damage equal to his power to each opponent, which is nice. That unfortunately is more of a passive effect, so it's not activated, so we can't take that portion of it for Marvin. But we do have Monstrosity 5 for 5. So assuming Marvin hadn't gotten any counters yet from any of the other power modulations we've gone over, we could make them a uh, little, little 5 counter boy, right? So Marvin will jump up to being 7. Uh, Sid's toy from Toy Story would become a 6. Golem Artisan. So this is a 3-3 three, three for 5 generic mana. We could pay 2 to give a creature a plus 1, plus 1 for the turn. Not as good as some of our others. We could also pay 2 to have an artifact creature, which happens to be Marvin, gain Flying, Trample, or Haste until end of turn. Uh, flying and Trample kind of being like our big go-tos for this deck. Hanger Back Walker. So another double X creature. Uh, they're going to enter with X plus one plus one counters on them. Whenever they die, we're going to create Thopters based on, you know, how many counters were on them, which again isn't in activated abilities, but we can still pay that one and tap them down. And in this case, also Marvin to give a little bit more uh, permanent power. Of course, what happens to be a pretty uh, strong MVP contender for this deck is the Steel Overseer. Basically, all of our creatures are artifact creatures, and the fact that they get to tap down to put a plus one plus one on all of them and also passes that ability out to Marvin is Chef's Kiss. Threefold Thunderhawk. So a seven cost, zero, zero, but it will enter with three plus one plus one counters. Whenever it enters or attacks, we get to create that many more one one gnomes, 
and we could pay two and sack an artifact to put a counter onto them. So again, really just that last ability that we get to steal from Arvin, but I'd like to threefold Thunderhawk in general. Tawashi Guidebot. Uh, so it's going to enter with a uh, plus one, plus one counter distribution, which is nice. Uh, I'm only going to counter here because of the fact that it cares about modified things, and we are modifying things in this section. Uh, so for four mana, reduced by one for each modified creature we have, we get to just tap them down and draw a card. So pretty quickly, I think we're going to you know, have this at two or one tap, draw a card. And card draw is always nice. You know what? I did miss one. Let's double back real quick to Hexavis. Hexavis is a 0, zero 6 cost, but they will enter with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters and flying, which is nice. We could pay 1 to remove a counter from itself to give a flying counter to another target creature. So unfortunately, our Marvin Murderous Mimic can't just be like, aha, I'll remove one from myself to give myself a, you know, flying counter. But Hexavis could do it for them, so it's okay. Also, we could pay one to remove a counter from any other creature in the field that we control and beef ourselves up with a plus one plus one counter. Let's modify ourselves in other ways, not strictly power. We'll start off with the Amaranthine Wall, a 0-6 defender for four mana. We could pay two to make it indestructible, which means we could pay two to make Marvin indestructible. Pretty nice. Ginger Brute. Uh, so Ginger Brute is a 1-1 one, one for 1 with haste. You can pay 1 to make it so the target creature can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. A little bit of evasion for Marvin. You could also pay 2 and tap and sacrifice them to gain 3 life. Could be relevant in like the event of a board wipe that you don't have any real other response to. It's like, well, may as well sack Marvin and like gain some life. But generally speaking, we're here for that first ability. Golden Guardian. A 4-4 four, four for 4 with Defender. You could pay two mana and force a fight. When it dies, you would normally return it back to the field as a land, in this case, the Gold Forge Garrison, which taps to add two mana of any one color to your pool, or you could pay four and tap them to create a 4-4 four, four Golem. Uh, we really never want them to fight. Uh, we're really stealing that ability from Arvin once he's pumped up and ideally indestructible with that wall and just like destroy our opponent's field. Ah, you know, we kind of skipped over this one earlier. We are running a Steel Hellkite. So a 5-5 five, five Flyer for 6. Not bad, not bad. We could pay 2 to give them plus 1, plus 0 for the turn. Which isn't the best return on investment, right? We have a lot of things in here that are like, oh, pay 1 and get permanent plus 1, plus 1. Uh, we could also pay X to destroy each permanent with mana by UX, whose controller was dealt damage by it this turn. Which is another activated ability that we could steal from Marvin. Not necessarily an ability we're going to steal, but it is some evasion from Arbin, and that's going to be through the Suspicious Bookcase, which is a 0-4 defender for 2. We can pay 3 and tap it to make a creature unblockable for the turn. Let's get to untapping, though, shall we? We're going to start off with the Voltaic Construct, a 2-2 two, two for 4, which isn't great value, but the fact that we could pay 2 to untap target artifact creature is pretty nice. Peely Pala, a 2-cost, 1-1 one, one flying artifact creature Scarecrow. We could pay two and untap them to add mana to our mana pool, which is nice, right? I do think that there are a couple ways of kind of going infinite with that in this deck. Moving out of our creatures and in more just general support, we do run Clock of Omens, so we could tap two untapped artifacts to untap another artifact we control. Manifold Key kind of falls into both categories, honestly. Uh, one cost artifact, we could pay one and tap it to untap another artifact. Or we could pay three and tap it to make our ideally commander unblockable. Staff of Domination, right? Three mana, pay one to untap it, two to gain life, three to untap a creature, four to tap a creature, and five to draw a card. Most of these abilities aren't crazy, like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Uh, but some of them are worth talking about, specifically the ability to untap our creatures. And obviously, Staff of Domination combined with Infinite Mana, which we have a couple different ways of achieving in this stack, is just Chef's Kiss. We're also running the Unwinding Clock, so we're going to go ahead and untap all of our artifacts, which is basically our entire field, at every single upkeep. As well as the Voltaic Key. So, one mana, one and tap to untap an artifact. 
Let's go ahead, reduce, reuse, and recycle, right? We're running Ugin the Ineffable. Six costs, couple of spells are gonna cost us two less, which happens to be all of our spells. We could do some exile shenanigans to manifest dread. We could also destroy permanents that happen to be colors. Uh, primarily here for the first effect, uh, that, that passive two cost reduction. The other effects are definitely good though, and I'm happy to manifest dread because whenever those cards would leave the battlefield, they go into our hand that we've manifested. So definitely a good way of you know, like keeping our hand full here. Foundry Inspector, right? Three, two for three. Artifact spells cost one less. Again, most of our most of our deck is artifact spells. So we'll take the reduction. Glaring Flesh Raker. So two, two for three. Whenever we cast a colorless spell, basically all of them, we're going to get an Eldrazi. Whenever a colorless creature enters, we're going to deal one damage to each opponent. So, you know, any of these things, especially that threefold Thunderhawk, it's like, yeah, no, I've beefed up my threefold Thunderhawk. Um, I swung for huge damage on attack. He generates a bunch of colorless gnomes and just Rex face. Not necessarily cost reduction, but definitely ramp with the Palladian Myrrh. So a 2-2 two, two for 3 that taps for 2 mana. An ability that we could steal for Marvin if we want to ramp extra hard in a single turn. As far as mana rocks go, we're running kind of all the big ones, right? We have Basalt Monolith, the Dreamstone Hedron, Everflowing Chalice, Forsaken Monument to ensure that we have that infinite mana combo with the Basalt Monolith from earlier, Hedron Archive, Mindstone, a Moon Silver Key so that, you know, not ramp directly, but lets us tutor for ramp, Soul Ring, Thought Vessel, Thrain Dynamo, and a Worn Power Stone. All of which are great, all of which are ramping us, letting us cast more spells, and ideally just, you know, winning the game through pure value. Normally I would have some honorable mentions, and obviously there's more cards in the deck that I didn't touch on. If you want to take a look at the full deck list, there's always a link to it in the description down below. Uh, no honorable mentions for this one. Uh, and not for any particular reason, uh, I just don't feel like there's a ton of super expensive cards in my mind that also work with this. Uh, I could be wrong, you know, what, what, what cards are you including in your Marvin deck that I haven't included here? Let me know down below. But that's the deck tech, guys. If you felt like you got value out of Marvin, you know, you enjoy seeing my beautiful face, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, you know. Leave a comment, share the video, do all the algorithm things to help the channel grow. And until next time, I'm Mechanized Minion, wishing you good luck with your build.